Okay. So things things keep changing, and they're and we'll, okay. What, what what do I imagine the impact is on someone say someone trying to make say a control panel for Linux? What do I think what do I think the impact is uh, as a result of say Grub not having a configuration file that reads the same between upgrades? Something's going to go wrong. And yes, some did, because now my, ever since about SUSE 11, I don't even bother trying to put, change your master boot record with YAST. At least in my experience, it, it always just gives you a black screen. Whip out the Nopix, because that's, that's how you're getting back. Um... Susie used to have a very good tool that you would be able to take here, install this, can pick install. It was like in an illogical place, but you can do it. You can pick install, and you can boot the installed system. If you had nothing to boot from, it would boot right in there. It's gone. Uh, Susie's print setup used to be great. They changed it to try to look like Windows. And then, and then kind of auto-detect the network. Well, it doesn't detect anything on the network for one. And they don't install. I end up using the CUPS interface. Um, what happened? We had something that worked. And the point is, is that we don't want to lose stuff that works already. If it's good and it works, keep it. And by golly, don't change that. Keep make it solid. Make it a peg in the ground. So all the other libraries and apps and binaries that your app depends on. And also, if you're down, oh yeah, sorry. If you're down there, don't be fucking around and splitting your libraries into a million things. It's just nuts. I'm not even for splitting libraries. And, I, and as a user that has no programming skills, I could care less if the source code is open. Most desktop or desktop users don't care. They might want to make something someday, and they may want to be able to do something. But I don't think that's just because the source code is open that. Linux is arriving on their desk. I think if at t owned Linux, they would probably be giving Windows a run for their money right now. Not Linux, but Unix. Um, and they cared if at t cared about it to do it, because they'd have they'd have the workforce behind it. I'm not trying to discount the volunteerism, but I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. I think that there's too much, there are too many parts that are administrated by too many different people to allow the system to sync up, to end up on someone's desk as a polished enough product that it can be used. And so it wastes everybody's effort that made all, everything up to that point. And if you throw in these different changes, into the mix, you really fuck things up. Even worse. It just gets worse. So Linux becomes absolutely unusable for all those uh, those reasons. If And then we got, we have a, a and, and a, the release of a new distribution at a pace of one every six months is, is nuts. It's got to be once every two years. It's nuts for two reasons. One, the, the end users why would you want to do that pace? I think release early, release often is nuts. I think release often is good, but I don't, I don't at all endorse the idea of just, just throw it out there. Who cares? Don't even bother debugging it. Just throw it out there. Release often. You know, let, let the end users debug. No. No. Otherwise, it, it's not a product worth using. Or, and I know Linux is not really a product, <laughs> but I want it to be a product. Um, I used to actually used to be able to buy it as a product, and I've noticed the quality's gone down since I haven't been able to buy it. And I do notice that bugs still lurk everywhere, even though the source is open. So that whole that whole thing is just false. Bugs in GNOME, bugs in Yast, bugs in OpenSUSE. Some of these things you say, oh well, they didn't give us the driver. Well, it used to work. 
And if it's if it's this whole you know religious thing about not using proprietary drivers, or once again, I care less for myself about having the source code. If someone wants to make a driver for my my video card, but doesn't want to release the source code for their own reasons because they want to you know for whatever their business reasons, it's their reason to stay in business. They make the they make the card. They you know. And as a customer, I want to have a car. I want a driver that works right. So I don't want to be Bible thumped and told I I shouldn't have it, or it's a bad thing. It's just completely irrelevant to me, to my existence. Now I do think that having someone like Stallman in, in open source is very important, though, because it sets a tone. It sets a philosophical parameter and to a certain sense and degree. But the overall um, interweaving of the machine—you it, know—it's just—it's like it's like trying trying to get in a, uh, drive a car, and then there's a wheel that falls off. Then you know you put the wheel on, then the then the radiator breaks, you know. But you know, just one—it it isn't a well-oiled machine that works together. It's not not a Porsche, you know. Uh, it could be a Porsche. It very much could be a Porsche, but it's not being a Porsche because some people decide, well, let's see what happens. Wouldn't it be neat, uh, academically speaking, you know, uh, we should use uh, tires that are made out of this and this r rubber or, or something like that, you know, and then on certain cars it won't, you know, the, <coughs> the car won't run or, you know what I mean? It's, um, you know, we, we shouldn't embrace any project that changes the modus operandi of the way things work without good reason or without giving the user a way out. There's got to be some rules out there. And it's not just putting config files in the Xterra directory, which just doesn't work. And I am now absolutely in support of any, um, after seeing how well and how easy programs install on the Haiku operating system, the whole idea of sharing libraries is just nuts. I think it's absolutely nuts. It causes problems for things to compile as you have more and more issues. It's, it's kind of like trying to run it's, it's it goes back to the argument of the monolithic kernel versus the um, the um, modularized kernel. When you have different people working on different parts. Um, it's not. It, there's more. There are more. Fa more failure points. You know, unless you're going to have a few people working on it or one person working on it, they can deal with those failure points. Not just some guy way over here that doesn't talk to this guy over here. But the two programs need to interwork together. It doesn't work. You know, I, I was in today earlier today. I was trying to see if I can get package source to work. Okay. The end result of this chaos is what happens to package source. Um, I erroneously put on my blog that I thought it was package source that's broken, but I don't think package source is broken. I think people that work on package source work very hard to try to keep up with just the absolute chaos that's out there with regard to open source software. Uh, you know, this program requires this library of this version. But oh no! Now we're gonna, we're gonna this library is split into two libraries. Okay, so they didn't add that to the make file, so that doesn't compile. I'd say right now, packet source in Slackware, nothing of any use to any desktop user will compile. Point blank. Um, it should, but it won't. And the reason why it won't is because inevitably, before you get to the stage where you want to have KDE. KDE or even something as small as VL, VLC compile, which I tried, something will fail out. In my, ca my case was a Mesa library, so then eight, some kind of cursor library, you know, uh, four or five different libraries that were related to X library ICE, or, you know, I don't remember all the libraries, but those are some of them. Um, guess what? If VLC had its own libraries, it, probably, it would compile. Because they do the testing there. They'd be in control of that, and they'd be able to get it out. And they wouldn't release it until it worked. But now they have to wonder whether some guy that makes live ice over in Siberia is going to make it... 
it's going to compile their thing later on when they get, you know, it's just, you know, or what if the guys that, that make the scripts for package sources get in the wrong version of live, you know, it's just too many failure points. It's too easy to fail. So I imagine that the packagers and all these uh, people that make their distributions work very hard, long hours, and and the owners of these companies are giving the software away. Hey, sorry, I'm a CPA. That, the equation doesn't work. You're going to go out of business. Mandrake will, will, will go out of business before Red Hat decided to raise their prices on their distribution and call it an enterprise server. Um, they did, weren't making money on on the desktop with their with with the sets they were selling because it was too hard to make and the free nature and the free avail availability of the software brought the prices down and they, they you know they they couldn't I know I saw the financial statements so don't don't tell me they were making money um, I know how to read them too. And so, basically, in the way Unix is so is, is so fragmented right now, it's got to be just no one can just say, "Okay, I, I own all this stuff now," and walk off with it and make something good out of it. So we got to make something good out of it. So how are we going to make something good out of it? One is we're not going to ruffle feathers. We're not going to start. The only way we can do it is it. No, we don't break the way things get configured. Don't don't change that. Don't don't do it ever. Before you ever release anything, it does anything automatically. You better damn well sure make sure that one to the general public as a non-beta like Rub2 that everything you tested on works, and you get a lot of testers that are volunteering as testers that know and expect this thing to fail. Not on a Ubuntu disk that some. Brit with a face that looks like he's um, just so keen because he's using Linux, you know, uh, people like that <laughs> postered all over the, the over the magazine as if uh, people are just if they only knew about this Linux, if they only knew. You know, when you stick it in and you have problems, guess what? It just looks like snake oil. People feel like it's and they get pissed off and they go make their blogs. And they tell everybody they know, don't ever fucking use that software. Right now I'm using Windows to record this because um, the problem is, is that of my choices of video recorders in Linux, just the, the state of the way things are, uh, VLC won't record a clear video. Cheese will record a clear video, but it won't come up with audio. GUC view, view will record audio and video, but they'll be out of sync, guaranteed. Between all three of those parameters, I would think it would be able to work. VLC's in sync, but the video sucks. Then you spend a lot of time learning all this stuff, just how to get them to work, and VLC had this change where you have to put... I think I already went into all this with HW colon 1 comma 0 instead of dev audio. Come on. So Linux is going to go nowhere on the desktop at ever unless we stabilize the way things run so people will have um, and, and they know it's going to stay that way so once I learn how to fix my bootloader I ain't never gonna have to learn that again so once I learn how to set up my camera I don't ever have to learn that again and once I um, and once a developer makes a piece of software things aren't going to change in the background so his software is outdated in five years. The only the only software I think now that will run that's has a reasonable age on it. So you save money by running old software, especially if you know it works. Um, or the Loki games, I think. I don't know, I haven't even tested those out recently. Why? Because they bundle all their own libraries and they put everything in one package and they didn't really rely on anything else but the kernel. And maybe X11. And maybe those won't even run because now we have got XORG. I don't know. Or maybe because uh, <laughs> X3, the X486 config file is not in user local. You know, it's just user live, whatever it was. 
okay, I'm going to stop, but um, that's my honest opinion of the situation. Until those things happen, it just is not worth the time.